So we're going to kick off our little energy series with the first of the three letters in the acronym, which is N for nutrition. So we're going to go over the core principles today and then branch out into each area as and when certain things crop up in my own trading that can jog my memory of the things that I've used in the past leading up to this present moment. So first, before I get into anything, I'm just going to got to run through this disclaimer just in case anyone goes off and hurts themselves. If you choose to act on this knowledge, please use your own best judgment. If in doubt, seek professional advice before implementing any of the ideas expressed in this mini-series. You are solely responsible for any outcome, positive or negative, that you obtain by using said ideas. Um, it works for me. It might not necessarily work for everyone. Please do your own due diligence and don't make any drastic changes that you think may cause you harm, especially if you've got any particular health um, conditions or concerns. So that's out of the way. So nutrition, core principles. In order to improve, improve the efficiency of your body, or aka the health of your body, as far as nutrition is concerned, two things have to happen. One, you have to increase your ability, your body's ability to remove waste, also known as detoxification. This lowers the acidity, thereby increasing the alkal alkalinity of the body. And this is a fundamental prerequisite for having um, health. The second thing you have to do is increase nutrient density. Micronutrients are arguably more important than macronutrients. The reason for this is we can't use a protein in the body. It's a myth when people say we need protein. We don't need protein. We need the amino acids that make up the protein. So I always like to use the analogy, if you were going to build a house, would you rather start with a house De demolish the house and then rebuild your ideal home with the bricks left over or would you just rather start with the initial bricks go down to your local hardware store or wherever it is you get bricks and buy the bricks themselves and build a house it obviously takes much more energy to destroy um, um, deconstruct a protein into its amino acid counterparts or its amino acid components and then rebuild that into your protein because when you eat a piece of say chicken or um, um, beef or pork obviously our body our protein structure isn't the same as the animal we've eaten so our body has to go through the extra work of breaking that down into amino acids and then rebuilding that into the protein that's needed for our body any extra energy used by the body is energy that isn't going towards detoxification and as we've seen this has some serious consequences as we will see we will see that that has serious consequences so micronutrients means um, among other things it means the amino acids that make up uh, protein the fatty acids that make up fat and then the sugars, simple sugars, that make up the complex carbohydrates. So we're looking to um, make sure we get enough micronutrients, enough readily available sugars that will come from, natural sugars will come from things like fruits and vegetables, um, fatty acids from oils and fats in general, although oils are more accessible nutrient-wise. And then um, finally, um, the amino acids rather than the protein itself so that's going to be sprouted beans and legumes and the simpler proteins that are closer to their amino acid components rather than big complex protein meals so that's the reason why I believe micronutrients are arguably more important than macronutrients so here's why we need to do this why do we need to um, lower um, waste. Why do we need to get rid of waste and introduce more nutrients? That's because waste leads to putrefaction. Um, not putrefaction, putrefaction, um, which is the putrefying of proteins and carbohydrates, the rotting essentially, for want of a better word, when it oxidizes, and then that creates acidity. The acidity, if left unchecked, leads to inflammation, 
and the inflammation allows disease to enter our bodies because inflamed membranes allow attack to get in and our body's too busy trying to ward off the inflammation um, in order to be able to ward off disease. So essentially waste is the cause of all disease and it goes through these processes to get to disease. Acidity is either diluted with water, in which case a lot of people who are quote fat aren't actually fat, they're just carrying a lot of water weight from their toxicity. And so for example, salt is considered in anything more than what's absolutely required by ourselves. Salt is a toxin and so a gram of salt uh, requires 30 grams of water to neutralize. A gram of salt can hold 30 times its weight in water. And so this is why we see a lot of bloating and uh, quote fat people, um, overweight people who are, um, it's probably not very politically correct to say fat, um, overweight people, obese people um, who have a waste condition, a condition of toxicity, i.e. a backup of waste that causes putrefi putrefi putrefaction, get it out James, and that leads to acidity and then inflammation as we've just said. So our body goes about um, either diluting that acidity with water and or neutralizing it with nutrients. So what does that mean? We have to lower inflammation in order to absorb and utilize nutrients. It's not enough just to take in nutrients. And if you're ever wondering why you need to take those crazy amounts of vitamin C when our body actually doesn't need nearly as much vitamin C, like I don't take them, so I wouldn't know, but if it's like a thousand milligrams, two, three thousand, six thousand milligrams of vitamin C, our body might only need a fraction of that, but that's because we literally have to bombard it to get past all the inflammation. And toxicity that's in our body. So it's not a case of incre increasing nutrient intake in as much as it is increasing nutrient uptake into our system, into our body, rather than putting it in our mouth and having it come out, go through our system and come out, you know, be eliminated from our body without actually being ingested and, and having that uptake into our body. So the protocol, the basic, um, if you take away anything from this video, you should have a think about how you can lower inflammation in your body and how you can thereby increase the nutrient uptake. Uh, so you do have to take in the nutrients, but that's not enough. You then have to make sure that those are absorbed into your system. So how do we go about lowering inflammation? It's easy to get nutrients in, you just eat the food source, you know, or you take your supplements. But how do you lower inflammation so that those nutrients can actually take effect in your body? You do that by eating a whole unprocessed foods diet. That means the more processes a food source has gone through, the more it's going to be recognized as a toxin in your body, the more energy it's going to take to digest it, and the more um, the more waste byproducts that are going to be produced with the digestion of that food. So a jacket potato beats chips because the jacket potato has gone through less of a processing than the chips have. Cod fillet beats fish fingers for the same reason. And so the basic rule of thumb is the more processes it's been through, uh, the less of a food it is and the more it's going to leave a toxic residue in your body. So that's the first thing you can do. The second thing, properly combine your food. So eat carbohydrates with salad and or vegetables, protein with salad and or vegetables, and eat fruit first thing in the morning because they all digest in different ways. And when you combine them all together, you end up with uh, more putrefaction or um, rotting than if you keep them apart. So that's something else you can do. And these are in order of importance. Drink outside of meal times. If you drink a liter of water onto your food, um, you dilute the stomach acids and you give your body a harder time at digesting that food. And if it can't digest the food properly, it's going to have toxic byproducts and some is going to be left behind to putrefy in your body going along the same sort of theme where enzymes are concerned, 
chew your food. We're in a mad rush these days. You should really be chewing your food about 20 to 30 times each small mouthful. Hardly any of us do it, including me, quite frankly. But if you do, um, there was a well-known diet, actually, to lose weight, whereby you could eat whatever you want, and all you had to do was chew every single small mouthful of food that entered your mouth 30 times without fail. If you do that for two, three weeks, and you have the discipline to chew every bite of food 30 times, you supposedly will lose seven pounds in weight. And that's simply because it's not a case of calorie in, calorie out. It's also a case of toxicity and the water weight that's kept on you as a, pro as a result of being overly toxic because you didn't chew your food properly and therefore it was less, less readily digested. And then the fifth and final thing you can do with regards to food, this is just within the realm of nutrition. Then there are other causes of an acidic environment in your body, which is outside the scope of this video. But you can respect your circadian rhythms. Now, for those of you who don't know, circadian rhythm is basically the way your sleep-wake cycle so typically people get up eight in the morning, they eat breakfast, they go out, they work, they get that slump in the afternoon, their energy picks up into the evening, they eat again, and then they go to bed at 10 or 11. Uh, this is the average circadian rhythm that essentially is broken down into three sections, three thirds, each lasting obviously eight, hour, eight hours. You have um, appropriation, uh, assimilation, and then elimination. Eight hours of your day, give or take, is dedicated to, um, or should be dedicated to, the appropriation of food, so taking in food. Then eight hours dev devoted to the assimilation, the breakdown, the digestion of food. And then finally, the last eight hours in, in the 24-hour cycle to the elimination of food. And if you encroach on any one of those cycles, you don't give them the time of day to follow through, i.e. you eat around the clock, then your body's never going to fall into a rhythm of eliminating properly. And this is why we have breakfast, which is breaking the fast, the nighttime fast. So you should stop eating a few hours before you go to bed and then eat your first meal of the day should be a high water content fruit based meal down into the morning um, as you um, you start your day and so by the time you finish eating early on in the evening and you get to breakfast you will have essentially fasted for perhaps 12 hours of the day give or take if you finish your your evening meal at 8 or 9 in the evening and then you eat breakfast 8 or 9 in the morning. And this helps your body again to be able to detox and if it can detox then it doesn't get acidic and if it doesn't get acidic it doesn't become inflamed and require the use of the nutrients. So why all of this? What has this got to do with trading? It's quite simple. If your brain, if your body and your brain, as it's part of your body, doesn't get the nutrients it requires, it cannot perform at its optimum level. And so a lot of people will supplement, they'll get, they'll get the food in. Most people know the trace minerals and the things that they need to get into their body. But then they wonder why it doesn't have the desired effect and that's because of toxicity. So it's a two-pronged approach. Lower inflammation, increase nutrient uptake, and because you've lowered inflammation, you're going to be able to utilize the nutrients that you put into your body because that's going to allow them to get to work on the parts of your body that need the nutrients rather than go towards um, neutralizing acidity. So a bit of a long video. I'll try and make them shorter next time, but it's the first time I'm doing something like this with a slideshow. So I hope you got something out of that. That's the, that's the, these are the core principles. We can drill down into areas of interest if anyone's interested. But that's sort of the over, overview of how I approach nutrition in order to um, improve the body's efficiency and thereby 
making your brain more receptive and able to be used for this challenging sport that we call trading. So that's it for now. Subscribe if you haven't for more videos like this. And as always, stick to your rules and trade your plan. See you next time.